Hello and Academians. This is me, Vignesh N. P. And I'm here to present the fourth lesson of class 11th biology on animal kingdom. So this is about me. My name is Vignesh N. P. And teaching is my passion. And here are the extra details. And please, you can follow me at an academy by hitting the link below. The features we use to classify animal kingdom are 1. Levels of organization that is you have the cell level of organization then you have tissue level of organization then you have the organ level and there is the system and organism so there is cell level, tissue level and organ level. Second is the symmetry. There are two types of symmetry of animals one is the radial symmetry is shown by this starfish and any plane passing through the central axis divides organism into two identical halves bilateral symmetry when only one plane can do so like in this butterfly you can cut it here but not like this three diploblastic and triploblastic organism diploblastic means Cells arranged in two embryonic layers and triploblastic means cell arranged in three embryonic layers and the, sec uh, the extra layer is called mesoglia and it is given in this diagram. For the coelom, coelom is the body cavity which is lined by the mesoderm and the animals which possess coelom are called coelomates and body cavity which is not lined by mesoderm such animals are called pseudocoelomates and animals that doesn't have body cavity are known as acelomates like it's shown in this figure 5 segmentation some animals show division into segments with repetition of some organs like in this 6 notochord Notochord is the primitive beginning to the backbone formed during embryonic development. Animals with notochords are called chordates and animals without notochords are called non-chordates. Now we will move on to the various types of animals. First is the porifera. They are generally known as sponges. So when you think of porifera, the first thing that your, that should come into your mind is sponges and they are obviously marine they have cellular level of organization and they do not have separate sexes that is they are, hermaph they are hermaphrodites example spongilla which is the freshwater sponge and you spongia which is the bath sponge second is a cylindrata or it is also known as nidaria they have radial symmetry they have nidoblasts containing stinging capsules on the tentacles and the body and thus their name nidaria they have nidoblasts so when you think of sealant traits the first thing that should come in your mind is the nidaria or the uh, nidoblasts they have tissue level of organization and are diploblastic they exhibit two body forms polyps and medusa Example Adams here, sea anemone, and Gorgonia, sea fan. Next is Tinophora. They are also known as sea walnuts or comb jellies. They are exclusively marine, radially symmetrical, and they have a tissue level of organization. They possess eight external rows of comb plates which help in locomotion. And an interesting property shown by them is the bioluminescence which is which you can see in this photograph that is the property of living organisms to emit light example pleurobrachia and tenoplana and keep in mind that you should always know examples of the various animals and uh, learning two is better than one as you'll remember at least one next is the platyhelminthus they are also called flat worms. You can see why they are called flat worms. They have bilateral symmetry, they are triploblastic and acelomates. 
they are mostly endoparasites thus have hooks and suckers so they can suck on your blood specialized flame cells help in phosmoregulation and excretion these are specialized cells called flame cells which are peculiar of platyhelminthes example tinea is the tapeworm and fasciola is the liver fluke uh, next we move on to ash helminthes they have circular cross section you can see in this photo they have circular cross section and hence are called round worms they have an organ level of system and they are pseudocelomates they are dioecious which means sexes are separate example ascaris which is the round worm itself gusheria which is the filaria worm now we move on to annelida segmented and coelomate their most peculiar thing is that they are segmented they have a closed circulatory system and the nephridia help in osmoregulation and excretion nephridia is a peculiar feature of annelida example ferritima is the earthworm and hirudinaria is the common blood sucking leech now we move on to arthropoda they are the largest phylum and they consist of insects they are known as arthropoda because arthros means joint and poda means appendages that is they have jointed appendages you can see it by they are covered by chitinous exoskeleton and their excretion is through malpighian tubules example honeybee silkworm now we move on to mollusca their body is covered with calcareous shells that is this shell is made up of calcium their anterior head region which have sensory tentacles and mouth contains a rasping organ for feeding which is known as radula example apple snail pearl oyster next is the echinodermata echinodermata have endoskeleton of calcareous ossicles ossicles means plates they have cal calcareous plates presence of water vascular system helps in locomotion and respiration and this is the most distinctive feature of echinodermata that they have presence of water vascular system excretory system is absent example sea urchin and starfish next is the hemichordata they consist of worm like marine animals and their body is cylindrical and they have open circulatory system excretory organ here is the proboscis gland which is this one example balanoglossus and sacoglossus now we move on to caudata characterized by presence of notochord hollow nerve cord cord and pharyngeal gill slits they are divided into three sub subphyla tunicata cephalocordata and vertebrata now we will learn about the subphylum vertebrata which is one of the most important topics of this chapter they possess notochord during embryonic period they are replaced by that notochord is replaced by cartilaginous or sometimes bony vertebral column in the adult they have a ventral muscular heart with two three or four chambers and kidneys for osmoregulation and excretion now these are the class of vertebrata and i have made it in a chart please go through this now we move on to our homework find relation between name of phylum and their properties that is the first homework that is please connect the names of phylum like arthropoda there is jointed appendages you could connect names of phylums and their properties and learn better learn about the classes of vertebrata in detail okay this is very important and make a chart of the classification and stick it near your bed so that you can see it all the time and learn it because this is tough to memorize if you just don't memorize it it's very tough okay so please 
keep in mind what I said right now. So please rate, review and recommend my courses on an academy so that we can carry on this education revolution. Thank you. Thank you all.